Am I wrong for paying for another bride's wedding dress, but not my daughter's? My husband and I worked hard and managed to become financially secure adults after both of us grew up in poverty. We raised our children to work hard. We did not spoil them or provide them with a lavish life. As teens, they all had part-time jobs, but we did purchase them their own used cars, which they were required to maintain. We also paid for college and we paid for our oldest two kids' weddings. However, we were merely the ones paying and we did not provide any input or suggestions unless asked. The only thing we didn't pay for their weddings was our son's tuxedo and our oldest daughter's wedding dress. Our youngest daughter, Michaela, is engaged and we are paying for her wedding with the exception of her dress. She must buy her own wedding dress. Michaela invited her dad and I to watch her try on dresses with the bridal party. She found a beautiful dress in her budget and we were so honored to have been allowed to take part in her finding the dress and seeing herself as a bride. Hey, I really like these parents. They sound really dope. While there, I complimented another bride on a dress she was wearing and her mother and I struck up a conversation where I learned that the family was low income and both the bride and groom and their bride's parents had taken out loans to have a beautiful wedding. I... 100% disagree with people who have to take out loans to have weddings. Don't have the wedding. Have a party in your house. Go hurrah, buy a cheap white dress from like Ross or something. But you should never take out loans. That's how the system destroys us because society has brainwashed us into thinking that you have to have this lavish lifestyle wedding. Why would you put yourself into debt over one night? Like why? The bride is also plus sized and I learned that she had been to six different stores and there had only been a few options for her size and all of them had just been awful. The bride ended up falling in love with the last dress she tried on but was heartbroken to learn that the consultant had misread the price tag and the dress was actually $1,000 over budget. And with alterations to make it her size, it was another $1,400. The bride took the dress off and said she'd try to find something online. I grew up poor and I was also a chubby kid. I was bullied and I was very unhappy. I always wanted more and in this bride I saw myself and I didn't want her to have to settle for a dress that fit versus a dress that she loved. So while my daughter was changing, I asked the other bride if I could pay the difference on her dress. It was very emotional. We all held each other and cried. She accepted. See, that's such a nice gesture though. Like that is really sweet. I very happily paid the difference on her dress. Her mother, herself and I are now friends on Facebook and my husband and I have been invited to the wedding, which we will gladly attend. I felt very honored to have been allowed to help this girl in a very very small way, but being invited to her wedding was so unexpected and amazing. When Michaela found out about this, she threw a fit and said that I obviously had shown how I truly feel about her wedding and herself, and if I cared at all, I'd have paid for her dress too. She's now not speaking to me or her father, who didn't even have a hand in this, which is unfair. She has now uninvited us from the wedding. We're so hurt and confused. Was I an asshole? Story time about how my stepdad made my mom choose between him and my brothers. So a little background information, I was 13 years old and in 7th grade, and I had two older brothers, Josh and Alex, who were twins, and they were both 4 years older than me. Whenever I was 3, my dad left my mom for his dentist, and we never saw him again because he decided to start a whole new family with them. Now because of that, my older brothers always felt like they had a specific role in my family, especially because the guys that my mom brought home, they would only last a week. Well, finally my mom met this guy who's really nice, and she decided that she was going to get married to him, but he despised my older brothers. Mainly because before he moved in with us, my mom would not depend on him for anything. Anything that needed taken care of around the house, my brothers would do it. And we didn't have too much money while this guy was loaded. Like the one time my mom and this guy, who we're gonna call Jerry, got into a fight. Like for part two. Part two about how my stepdad made my mom choose between him or my brothers. So like I said, my mom and Jerry got into this one fight. And it's a super long story, but pretty much all it made Jerry realize was that he did not have authority over my mother. And she didn't have to depend on him for anything because my brothers would always be there for her. Now, Alex was more of the shy one. Meanwhile, Josh was super hot-headed and didn't deal with anybody's bullshit. And fast forward, my mom and Jerry move in together. That's when we realized that Jerry was super abusive. And Jerry knew that he could pick on Alex whenever he wanted because he wasn't going to do shit. And most of the time, Josh wasn't home because he literally hated Jerry. The one time Alex came home and he did really bad on this one test. And Jerry was like, oh, he needs to learn discipline, blah, blah, blah. The next day, we all were sitting down for breakfast and we saw Alex come downstairs with a black eye. And that's whenever Josh flipped the fuck out. He grabbed Jerry, ripped him across the fucking table, and threatened him with a kitchen knife. And my mom called the cops, like for part three. 
part three about how my stepdad made my mom choose between him or my brothers. So like I said, he said he needed to teach some discipline. So he literally beat the shit out of Alex. And we all didn't know until he came downstairs the one morning for breakfast. And that's whenever Josh flipped the hell out. He threatened Jerry with a knife. After that, my mom called the cops. I didn't really do anything but try to de-escalate the situation. But after that, Jerry called a family meeting down to the kitchen table. And he was like, I will not deal with this level of disrespect in this house. He was like, you need to choose between me or them. She was like, well, I'm not going to choose between you or my kids. And he was like, well, then you need to choose them leaving the house. They're about to be 18. They can leave and get their own place. So my mom ended up choosing Jerry because Jerry had a lot of money. And my brothers weren't really that mad about it because it got them out of the house. And my mom would send them a lot of money every month. And Jerry never knew about it. But now instead of him being abusive towards my brothers, he's way more abusive towards my mom. I miss my boyfriend when he was fat. My boyfriend and I dated for seven years. We're in our mid-twenties now. I met him through his best friend in junior year of high school. It was love at first sight for me. He was on the overweight side, a little shorter than me, and his looks weren't that great to others. It was his personality that got me. He was so caring and sweet, and we shared the same sense of humor. He had a dorky smile that I adored so much. He would compliment on how pretty I did my makeup and notice the little things like the shade of lipstick, shape of eyeliner, and extra mole. I kept all the letters he wrote for me on our anniversaries. He was bullied several times and had major insecurities about himself. I stayed with him among those years and did my best to support him. I once told him that I loved every part of him and there wasn't anything of him that I wanted to change. He cried that day. Three years ago, we decided to buy a gym membership. We made a resolution that we would achieve a healthier lifestyle. We cleared out our pantries and changed our groceries to fully commit to our goal. We gave up several times but reminded each other of our goal and went back on track. Fast forward, he's lost almost half of his weight. He's very fit now with nice pecs and tight abs. I couldn't be more proud of him. The problem is, he's like a new person. He's always either at the gym, at work, or went to bed early for his 8 hours of sleep. Whenever we're together, he comments on the food I eat and my weight. He constantly shows me comments that he gets from girls after posting shirtless body pictures, saying how he was hot and how they wish they could touch his abs, like he was proud of it. He replied to one girl, telling her that she was free to feel his muscles anytime with a winky face. I confronted him, telling him it was disrespectful to say that when he had a girlfriend, and he tried to insist it was just a joke and he called me insecure for it. He never tells me that he loves me anymore. We're only intimate when he wants to. He only talks about his workout plan to me, and is not interested whenever I tell him about my day. We don't go out on dates anymore because he's embarrassed of me. He thinks I would put a bad look on him because I'm not athletic. I'm 5'5 and I weigh 125 pounds. I screamed at him, telling him I dated him when he was double my size and I always defended him whenever people insulted him. He told me at least he made a change and it's sad how I always stayed the same. He's become an asshole and I'm in so much grief. I read the letters that he used to write me and cried for an hour. It feels like the man I was in love with died. After my lease ends, in two months, I'll cut him off. I thought I was going to marry this man, but now I don't think I could be with someone who will put me down after all those years I've been supporting his insecurities. I'm so heartbroken. I miss the person who he was. Am I the asshole for refusing to go to a pride event with my wife? I, 30 male, am married to a bisexual woman, 28 female. I'll start by saying that I'm in no way homophobic or bigoted. I've never had a problem with my wife's identity. The thing is, she's very vocal and showy about it. She has a lot of pride things and clothes and whatnot. Sometimes she just wears rainbow stuff instead of bisexual colors too, so there's been incidents where people think she's gay and don't realize I'm her husband. It honestly gets a little exhausting. She says she doesn't like it when people assume that she's straight just because she married a man and doesn't want a big part of her identity erased. Am I the asshole for refusing to go to a pride event with my wife? She says she doesn't like it when people assume she's straight because she married a man and doesn't want a big part of her identity that she struggled with to be erased. Still, it feels like she's almost ashamed of me. There's a big end of summer pride thing and it's also to raise money for LGBT kids and whatnot. I have no problem with her going, but she wants me to come with. She says it's important to her and she even got me an ally t-shirt. I told her no because it's not my thing and she got upset. She feels like I don't support her identity and I replied that maybe she needs to focus less on her identity and more on her current relationship. She's been icy with me ever since and I get I was mean, but still. Am I the asshole for locking my dad out of the house and now he might have pneumonia? My mom died around the time my sister was born and my dad, 37 male, is an okay guy. He's not the best and has his own stuff going on, but he's not the worst. He leaves town a lot and leaves me and my 15 male and my sister, 8 female, alone. Usually it's about 4 days and it happens like every 2-3 to three months. There's never a reason and he sometimes just gets drunk and leaves. Most of the time, it's without warning, and I get pissed because then it's up to me to order food and manage everything going on, but I know it's kind of petty. 
One day he leaves and doesn't come back for 10 days. Am I the asshole for locking my dad out of the house and causing him to get sick and maybe pneumonia? So 10 days go by before he finally comes back and at this point I'm really angry. When he comes back, it's around 2 a.m. and raining outside. I go to check who it is and once I see it's him, I'm really not in the mood to see or talk to him. So through the door, I tell him to get lost. He tells me it's raining like crazy and that he's sorry, but just let him in. By now, I'm even more pissed off, so I just leave him there. The next day, I check outside to see if he's there, and he is, but he looks like shit. So I let him in and now he's really sick, might even have pneumonia, I'm not sure yet. Am I wrong?